In the morning, my boyfriend took her to school, left her next to the church, which is right beside the middle school. The flower, and then she started walking and he drove off. Uh, they brought dogs to see if they can pick up her scent around there. I think they are investigating right now. And there are videos out on the streets. There's a video from a church next to the school where uh, they believe they see my daughter. What does that mother's intuition tell you? That someone took my daughter away. In my heart, someone took my daughter away because she lives for another market just like that. Hey, to run away, she's not that kind of person. Please, have her return to me. May she be safe. May she be well. I just want her to be returned. The boyfriend no longer lives there. He came this weekend because I don't know. But uh, my daughter worked the night before on Sunday. And it seems she woke up very tired and told her boyfriend to bring her here. And that's it. We know it now. From a new part of the routine that I'm not going to do frequently. Okay, so that was a pretty disturbing list of charges we read through yesterday, last night, when I was finally able to download that PDF showing all the charges brought against Stefan Stearns, the so-called stepfather of 13-year-old Madeline Soto. And so now we're digging back into all the first initial interviews given by Maddie's mom, Jennifer Soto, and her grandmother, Yolanda Zambrano, even though they're kind of hard to find and I've been doing my best to dub them into English. Some stuff might get lost in translation, but with all these Spanish language speaking people chiming in and me using this dubbing software, I think we get the gist of what they're saying. So this first video took place only about 30 hours after Jen Soto reported her daughter missing. This might be the first interview, and it's fascinating to watch her body language, just like we've studied others over the years that are giving these pleas to the public regarding a missing loved one. The first video from Telemundo, 31. We're going to talk about that, and let's dissect Jen Soto's body language, and then Let's talk about this first time I've seen Yolanda say, Stefan, Jen's boyfriend, didn't spend the night, allegedly that Sunday night after Maddie's birthday party, but he came over the next morning and she goes, I don't know why. So these clues are interesting. Telemundo 31 describes that first interview with Jennifer taking place about 30 or more hours after reporting her daughter missing. So you can tell it's nighttime. It is Monday, February 27th. So they're probably the first ones who got a chance to speak with Jen. And the translation says this 13 year old Hispanic girl who has been missing for more than 30 hours at this time. So that's how we know it's a little bit over 30 hours. And so if Jen reported Maddie missing that Monday around 4 something p.m., so this video, this interview might have taken place at 11 p.m. at night. Jen is upright standing. She seems a little more animated, but I'm picking up on some clues that still make me go, hmm, I don't see Stefan lurking anywhere in the background. So the video is titled, Madeline Soto's Mother Suspects that someone took her daughter missing in Florida. It was published by Telemundo 31 on February 27th, 2024. And we get to see the first glimpse of how she was acting and speaking. She seems less medicated, I'll say, than the videos that appeared later that took place in the condo, you know, when she's comforting Stefan. And I don't know when those other ones all took place. There's one where Jen is sitting like in front of a Zoom camera or something, talking to a reporter. Stefan is lurking in the background. Then there's another one where the bird feeder or the dog food feeder, cat food feeder goes off. I don't know if those two took place at the same time or not. But this one, this video with Telemundo, it's described as, the minor, 13 years old, did not arrive at school in Hunter's Creek, Orange County. Her mother found out about her absence from school when she went to pick her up in the afternoon. Okay, so it starts off, you can hear Jennifer's voice, but you can't see her face yet. And she says, in the morning, my boyfriend took her to school. In the morning, 
My boyfriend took her to school. It's noteworthy that Jen is calling Stefan her boyfriend at this point. Even though Jen's mom is going to describe Stefan as a person who doesn't live with them. And when we went over those charges yesterday, we saw some, there was a three year gap between some of the charges. 2019, and there was a three year blessed gap when hopefully to 2022, Stefan left Maddie alone. At least they don't have evidence, I guess, of his maltreatment of her between those years. Now we've heard rumors that Stefan and Jen were on again, off again. So was this during a period where they were breaking up? And what's worse to me is, were they breaking up because Jen knew in her heart of hearts, she's gonna talk about in my heart so much here. Did she know in her heart of hearts that he was messing with her daughter in a bad way? And did she, is that the reason she broke up with him? If true, why didn't she go to the police? Why didn't she have him arrested? Why did she let Stefan back in her life? Or did she just kind of sense overall something was wrong? There's so many rumors going around. There's somebody, Spanish speaking person who's supposedly talking to a TikToker. It's kind of hard to get the translations correct to know exactly what's being said, but rumors are flying. Stefan might have been part of some trafficking ring or Maddie might have hidden what she was going through from her biological father and her stepmother. There's rumors that supposedly Maddie's stepmother kept asking her, are you okay? Is someone hurting you? And allegedly they're saying Maddie kept saying no, no, no. And supposedly Maddie was banned from seeing her dad and her stepmom. I don't know if any of that is true. But if it is true, if her stepmom was perceiving something's wrong and she's trying to help Maddie and Maddie's like, no, 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 you know, because a lot of children, unfortunately, get frightened into not speaking. That's sad if she really was banned from seeing her father and her stepmom, because that would have been a reprieve, you know, that would have been such solace. Oh my goodness, it's difficult. This case is really difficult. There's one person I know who went through I guess a similar type of situation. And she said when she would arrive at her grandma and grandpa's house and just the smell of the garage, she liked the smell of garages because she knew she would be safe that weekend just going over her grandparents' house. So people who've never been through this type of stuff, boy, it's harrowing to hear what some folks have survived. So she's saying, my boyfriend took her to school and in this clip, Jen does not describe, okay, yes, I called him, he came over, he lived somewhere else, so he took her to school. So we don't have a full clip. I hope Telemundo has the raw footage. Maybe they can publish it all like other places do, you know, after a crime case really goes viral. Because I wanna see uninterrupted clips of Jen, just everything she told the news, especially only 30 hours after she reported her daughter missing. Left her next to the church, which is right beside the middle school. But it's very interesting, Jen says, left her next to the church. So she uses an interesting turn of phrase. I don't know if it's getting lost in translation again, but the other translations I've seen from Spanish to English kind of agree with this AI dubbing, left her next to the church instead of dropped her off next to the church. And it's like she's going to double down and use that phrase again. Left her next to the church like a sack of potatoes or like some inanimate object. Left her next to the church. I'm also fascinated that Stefan and or Jen, I don't know who came up with this. I dropped Maddie off at the Peace Church narrative. I find it interesting they chose a place like a church, a place of worship to put into their story. Maybe a lot of middle schoolers get dropped off at that church. I don't know because, you know, pick up and drop off time is so crowded. But, you know, people who've mapped it on Google Maps or folks who are from the area talk about that big four lane highway or street that intersects Peace Church in Hunters Creek Middle School where Maddie would have had to cross. And they say it seems unlikely. Of course, it's not true. He didn't do it anyway. But it's interesting they chose a church, a place where funerals take place, supposedly a place of worship, of peace, of rest. You know, all these little things concocted in their story. He left her at the church. You know, it reminds you of a place you'll see off the highway with like a cross to 
to memorialize a person having died there, almost in their story, it's like they're leaking. Oh, he left her at the church and she says it twice. Later when the way it comes off, may she be safe, we're going to listen to, may she be well. Some translations say, may she be healthy. It sounds like Jen is almost already giving her daughter a eulogy or something. But anyway, Jan is saying he dropped her off at that church, which is right beside the middle school. Well, that's kind of like a lie because she makes it sound like, oh, it's right across the street. It's kitty corner, you know, to the school. She makes it sound like Maddie would just have to walk here from here to here. When if you map it, it looks a lot longer, about a half a mile or so. It would have taken her about 10 minutes to make that walk if it were true at all. And then once again, even in this lie, whomever concocted, it, it's a lot of victim blaming. Oh, because Maddie wanted to walk. You know, that's why they dropped her off there. Oh, you know, Jen said Maddie wanted to walk the rest of the way. And someone else came up with the story that, oh, Maddie was too embarrassed over the car. You know, so they're like ascribing these things to Maddie. Oh, she was so vain. She didn't want to be seen dropped off in this car or with me or whatever, you know, they were making up. We all know it's a lie. Even in the lie, they're blaming the little girl. Back then when people thought, oh, you know, what could this be? Could this be an abduction? I don't know. They're still blaming Maddie. You know, whether Jen was told this, lie or whether she's reiterating the lie and in on it, they're blaming Maddie. Oh, she wanted to be dropped off so far away. She wanted to walk the rest of the way. She was embarrassed of the car, you know. Oh, almost like it's her fault that she got taken because, oh, she wanted all these things. The flower and then she started walking and he drove off. Uh... At this point, the English dubbing sounds like it says something about a flower. <laughs> it's not perfect. In actuality, I believe this is when she repeated the notion that Stefan Stearns left her there, just left Maddie there. So she says left her there twice, it sounds like, just um, doubling down on that type of language instead of saying he dropped Maddie off, you know, which sounds more alive, not just left her there. So Jen says, and then she started walking and he drove off. And that's when Jen gives like a wave of her hand. And he drove off as if almost dismissing her daughter at the same time, washing her hands of it, almost like absolving Stefan of his duties. He drove off, she says, you know, he left her there. He drove off. I don't know. I'd love to see what other body language experts and speech experts have to say about this interview. And I hope we get more of it. I want to see the full raw thing because I want to see Jen on screen the whole time because sometimes she does like the lip swallowing. She does that quite a bit where she's stopping herself from speaking. They brought dogs to see if they can pick up her scent around there. They brought dogs to see if they can pick up her scent around there. I think they are investigating right now, she says. I think they are investigating right now. Um... So even when I watch this in Spanish and I'm listening just to the cadence of our words, even if I don't understand every word, I notice it's very measured. She carefully selects her words. I understand. I take my time speaking too, and usually it's because I don't want to say anything wrong. I don't want to say anything that'll get me sued. I don't want to defame anyone. I really do think. But in this instance, if she was a desperate mom, you know, 30 hours after your daughter is missing, they're talking about, you know, it's growing dark. Where could she be? Oh my goodness. You know, wouldn't you kind of drop some of that pretense? Would you really be that measured? in your speaking and all the pausing. You can still hear a lot of pausing. Wouldn't you be, of course, exhausted, I'm sure. Would you not be more desperate? You know, like, oh my goodness, Lord, please, God, help me find her. Everyone come out, help me find her. This is what she was wearing. We're gonna talk about what she was allegedly wearing. Maddie, all these misleading clues. I think she would be a little bit more desperate than what she's coming off as here. And still, once again, she's not crying. She doesn't necessarily have the wide-eyed deer in headlights look, but I don't know, something is off. And I looked for Stearns. I didn't see him like off in the bushes somewhere lurking in the background. He's notably, you know, supposedly her boyfriend, but he's not there on camera the first time with her. Is he even there? Was he 
maybe off being questioned. He could have been at the police station by then. Who knows? So she's not sitting. She's standing up. I guess she's trying to put on this affect of worried about Maddie. Maybe she really is, but I don't know. There are videos out on the streets. She talks about, and there are videos out on the street. So she's talking about CCTV footage, and this is the first time that so-called church alleged footage comes in. There's a video from a church next to the school where uh, they believe they see my daughter. She says there's a video from a church next to the school. It's funny how all these lies involve the church. Oh, he dropped her off at the church. Oh, we see video footage at the church. Maybe it's because the first lie came when they concocted the story, okay, he dropped her off at the church. And so of course, police might've immediately gone and started looking through church footage and maybe they did see some kid there. And then I don't know if Jen, and Stefan were like, oh yeah, that must be her. That must have been what she was wearing. I don't know where this came from. But notably, Jen is saying there's video from a church next to the school where they believe they see my daughter. I noticed then Jen has not mentioned Maddie by name in any of these clips that I've seen published by Telemundo. A lot of people have noticed that about her other interviews. It's like the one interviewer has to prompt her almost to say Maddie's name because he brings it up. He mispronounced it. I think he called her like Madeline and that's when Jen said Madeline. And that was like like the only time she really was creating a distance between her and her daughter by not just crying out her name you know who wouldn't be saying oh my goodness please bring my maddie home maddie if you're out there i love you so much even though language like that could still represent someone lying but you just don't see it this is likely the first time we hear about that alleged church video now there's talk in here i translate it from spanish allegedly of someone wearing a green sports shirt or a sweater black shorts and some white crocs now i'm not exactly sure what Maddie was found in when her body was found. So I don't know where that came from. I know the green sweater, the green sweater has been mentioned before because grandma mentioned the green sweater. On the missing child alert, it's saying Maddie was last seen wearing a green jacket, black shorts and white Crocs. Okay, so that is, that's where it came from. She has a mole on the left side of her nose and the right side of her chin. Wow, that's where that came from on the missing poster. But what she was found in, if I'm not mistaken, was not a green sweater and white Crocs and black shorts. We'll have to learn more. Of course, we don't know a lot about all the ins and outs of the case. We don't know the cause of death. There's a lot of things we don't know yet. What does that mother's intuition tell you? That someone took my daughter away. In my heart, someone took my daughter away because she lives for another market just like that. Hey, to run away, she's not that kind of person. But at this point, the reporter had asked, what does your mother's intuition tell you? And here she goes, that, that someone took my daughter away. Now she can kind of, if she, if she knows what happened, if something bad happened in that condo, and she had Stefan take Maddie away, technically she's not lying. Sometimes people can say stuff where they're appearing honest because it's a sense of omission. She might be telling the truth that someone took my daughter away. Maybe she knows that someone was really Stefan. And this is when she says, in my heart, someone took my daughter away because it's not normal for her to leave like that to run away she's not that type of person something about that in my heart and that preposition those three words the way it's used here it reminds me of a lot of other people even if they don't exactly use the words in my heart but immediately i started thinking candace bly summer wells mom or different people who have used kind of similar language where there's always some other guy did it in my heart you know somebody took her i know she didn't walk away from this property by herself or off this yard by her swing i feel in my heart that somebody has came up here and took her has lured her away from here i hope that she's somewhere safe right now and with the kids but i mean could she event could she just take it off i don't know but if somebody has her and they're not safe like i want them back now oh suzanne if anyone is out there that can hear this that has you please we'll do whatever it takes to bring you back and i mean it's, 
she, she has to be somewhere. I, in my heart, I believe that she is somewhere. And I do anything to have her back. Your little girl. If there's any way if you can find it in your heart to please release her somehow, I don't know how you might do that. Somebody took her. Where, of course, abductions happen. But sometimes that's the immediately, that's the immediate go-to for some people. Oh, must have been stranger danger. Somebody took her away. It just harkens back to a lot of those Chris Watts type of interviews I've seen where you're just like, I don't know what's wrong, but something's wrong here. Please have her return to me. May she be safe. May she be well. I just want her to be returned. Then Jen says, please have her return to me, as if Maddie is some type of inanimate doll or object. Have her return to me. I guess every little thing seems a little suspicious under these circumstances, especially after reading oh, all those horrible charges last night, which I never want to read again. But it does make people wonder with so much mistreatment of Maddie going on for so often, for so many years, it's doubling down on some people's thought. How could Jen not know? I mean, there are things that especially a mother knows about her daughter. You know, you're very generally, you should be pretty close with your daughter. You know, when, you know, her cycle starts or when she needs her first bra, you go through all these milestones and there are things a mom can teach a daughter. And so you kind of should know like, whoa, something weird is going on here. <sighs> Anyway, that's when she goes with this inanimate language, please have her return to me as if she's some object. She can just, you know, pass around, have her return to me like this uh, salt lamp here or something. Have her return to me. I don't know. It's like some of it comes off as kind of cold. But then she starts saying, may she be well, may she be safe you know, may she be healthy, something like that. It sounds like a prayer to me. And she says, I just want her to be returned. And Google transcribes this from Spanish to English. I used a lot of different tools. It transcribes it as, please give her back to me. Make sure she is healthy. Make sure she is well. I only want her to be healthy, be well. I just want her. I just want the authorities to return her. So if she really said that, I guess she's like putting the onus on the police. I just want them to go find her and return her. The boyfriend no longer lived there. He came this weekend because I don't know. But uh, my daughter worked the night before on Sunday. And it seems she woke up very tired and told her boyfriend to bring her here. And that's it. We know it now. From a new part of the routine that I'm not going to do frequently. Now there's another video Telemundo published. It's titled Search for Madeline Soto, 13 year old girl missing in Florida, extended to Kissimmee. We've touched on this before, but now I finally got the first opening of grandma talking about Stefan not living with them. So this one was published the next day, February 28th, 2024. It looks like it takes place in grandma's office and Maddie's grandmother is talking about Stefan no longer living with them. She says the boyfriend no longer lived there. So it's interesting she doesn't call him by name. Some people take her body language as uh, she doesn't really like this guy. Maybe grandma picked up on that too. And I'm sure grandma knows a lot more about why they were breaking up on and off or whatever. The grandma says he came this weekend because I don't know. Like, why did he show up? But my daughter worked the night before on Sunday, and it seems she woke up very tired and told her boyfriend to bring it to her is the AI dubbing, but she might have said to bring her to school, to bring her to what, you know, sometimes if people don't, I think, enunciate too, maybe the AI dub gets a little confused. But I captured that portion to dub into English because I like to see the actual dub. I wanted to hear it for myself whether Yolanda had really said that. And yeah, she really did say Stefan no longer lived with Jen and Maddie. So that would make sense as to why Jen would claim, oh, Stefan came and picked Maddie up and then took her to school as opposed to, you know, we woke up and I turned over and said, Stefan, I'm too tired. Take Maddie to school. 
So at this point, Telemundo had said, you know, family members affirmed there was no talk at home for any reasons for Maddie to run away. So my question is, who spent the night with Maddie the night before? She was over her grandma's house that Sunday. We've seen the pictures from the birthday party. I'm assuming Maddie came back home to her condo. I don't know how she got there with her mom there that night who was really tired supposedly. So was it just Jen and Maddie in the condo that night at home? And then what the heck happened? Did something happen between the two of them? And Jen call Stefan and say, help me take care of this? Or was Stefan, even if he didn't live there, was he visiting the night before? We don't know when Stefan got there. I hope cops can find the timeline if they've caught stuff on, you know, his phone or his movements, or hopefully they can know when he arrived. Was he there Sunday night? Did something happen between the three of them Sunday night? Or what the heck? Is one cleaning up for the other or both, all of them? I don't know. But what happened that night? Did Maddie really survive the night? When was her time of death? All these questions are yet to be answered. Sometimes it depends. I'm so grateful at least they found her to the point where her remains can still tell the story and get justice for what that little girl has gone through. So the Telemundo reporter talks about being close to Plaza de Sol, near where Jennifer lived. And he talks about speaking with Madeline Soto's grandma. And it gets a little dicey because some of these translations are saying as if Madeline also lived with her grandma. I don't know if it was just Jen and Maddie in that condo alone when Stefan didn't live there. I'm hearing there were other relatives potentially who lived there. So I'm sure cops know all this by now, who all lived in that condo, who slept where, they're gathering more evidence and you know, I just still, we just wait for an arrest. I think that's what most people are waiting for. They're so angry. They just want to see another arrest and they want to see more charges added. And, you know, cops are taking their time. They're working, I'm sure, so hard. I mean, they already worked so hard to get those 60 additional charges tacked on to Stefan. We'll see, he probably won't show up for his arraignment April 2nd. Maybe there will be another arrest before then. Hopefully they have all the phones, they can download, you celebrate, get as much info as they need to get in order to find out what truly happened. Let's close with Lamentations 359. Oh Lord, you have seen the wrong done to me. Judge my case. I thought about Maddie when I was reading that the other day because God knows we as humans, we don't see everything of course, so the cops have to dig and dig and dig and get what they can to come out. Maybe Stefan thought he would never get caught, but I was thinking to myself if he really is part of some ring, if he's been doing this a long time, and people were misunderstanding that PDF from yesterday. Some people don't understand the way it's written. Some people assumed, oh, he was doing all of these five things, which he might have, but the way it's written is he at least had to be doing one of these things, which could have been, you know, taking videos, even if it doesn't have sound, or, you know, having images of a child under five and all this other stuff with animals. Some people, just the way they blew through it, they assumed, oh, he did all five of those things. It must be another child under five involved, and that's not what the police were saying. It's horrible enough. We just don't know. We will know more evidence as more evidence comes out when this dude finally goes to trial. If he makes it to trial, and these things can take a lot of time. But yeah, Maddie deserves her justice because, ugh, that PDF yesterday. She's been through a lot. Thankfully, she's on the other side of this earth. She's in heaven now, no worries now, no matter what she went through on earth. At least she can be symbolic and a cautionary tale to help everyone be more careful, you know, about who's around us and what devices they're using and what means they're using to hide things. Hopefully, maybe this will bust up another big ring. I don't know what'll happen, what'll come from it. And I was thinking of Stefan, maybe he thought he was getting away with it. like for so long, Lord knows how long he's been doing this, you know, the peeping Tom stories and the, all these horrible stories, doing it for so long and just never repenting or being contrite because if he truly recognized he had a sickness and he was trying to fight it and he needed help, that would be one thing if he had stopped doing it and turned away and tried to get help. But obviously 
he didn't stop. You know, he did not stop. And for some reason he was back in Maddie's life and he was just there, you know, even right after she turned 13, he's still there. And so it had to get to a point where it just was too much and it all came out and more of it'll come out. And thankfully he's caught. I don't know. You just want to rescue the children, especially. That's the update what we have now. Stay tuned for more updates on this and many other cases. Take care.